Hey everybody, Wendy Klinky with Blue Cat Studio. Welcome to another edition of Technique Tuesday, where I'm bound to have technical problems, but we can talk about techniques for art. So by popular request, we're gonna talk a little bit about stencils. Some of you have told me, hey, you know, when I do stenciling, it bleeds out underneath and it becomes a real mess. And how do I prevent that? Um, so I want to talk a little bit about how that works. So obviously I've just got a fun little Dollar Tree stencil here and there's a bunch of butterflies. Now I chose this one because some of the techniques I'm going to use will purposely bleed the, the paint under. And instead of you sitting here watching me wipe off my stencil to ensure that it doesn't bleed through the next one, I'm just going to go bop, 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 bop. So this is from demo only. This is just some random background that I had pre-painted. Okay, so we'll begin with some white paint. And let's talk about a couple of the different tools you have available. First and foremost, I guess I can put it right here too. We have a stencil brush, which is a natural bristle brush. They also have non-natural. This was in like some kids, kids kit. And they tend to, I don't really like the non-natural bristles. So I prefer that we have the board bristle brushes. And you'll notice that it's cut very, very flat and wide so that you have even coverage all at the same time. Where, and then we also have the, um, the, the foamy kind, which tend to be a little bit more absorbent. And when you push on them, they squeeze. So I don't know how you use stencil. I tend to be heavy handed and I learned this the hard way. So I used to sit there and pounce. Okay. So with one of these, it's like called a pouncer and you gently pounce like, so now I'm not using paint yet, but I'm about to. And with this one, the technique is actually a gentle circle. So let's, let's go do a couple of those. We'll begin with a pouncer. So I'm gonna get some paint on it. Now this is a lot of paint. You see how thick that is? Can you see that thickness? Yuck, it's gooky. So I need to offload, offload, offload like crazy so that I've got just a thin layer of paint on my palette. And as you can see, this guy is fairly thin too. And that's gonna set me up for success. And then I'm gonna come in and just gently dab, 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 dab. Now I tend to be like mash, mash, mash. And you know what happens when you mash like that? It goes faster, but it also tends to squish right under, right under that stencil. So stenciling is an art in and of itself. It's also an act of patience because sometimes it takes a few rounds to do it. So I'm very, very gently just pop, 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 pop. If I mash it down, it's going to squeeze under. Now, it also is going to depend on the substrate that you're using. Sometimes, um, uh, what am I trying to say here? Sometimes when you have um, like, like raw wood, it's going to soak up that paint so fast that you're likely to get much crisper lines because the, the wood is just going to go, ooh, paint, hello, and suck it up like a straw. Whereas if you've got like a really glossy or heavily painted surface, especially if you've been using like... Um, latex paint for a porch sign or whatever, um, it'll be a little bit more slippery. And so the paint will be more likely to go underneath. Okay, so let's see how I did there. I tried to be gentle. Okay, not bad, but here it's a little bit messier. If I bring it up higher, you can kind of see that it bled through a bit and that's because that's where I mashed it down. That went pretty well. My patience gets tried with that very, very quickly. Oh. So just checking right here where I mashed down, it actually bled through a little bit, so I'll wipe that off. Maybe we'll take the next guy. Now I'm gonna go with one of these. So again, you're gonna come into your white paint and then come off and offload, dab, dab, pounce. So that, I mean, you can really see the bristles and the gaps. It is not gooey. Now this time when I place it down, I'm gonna do gentle circular motions. Now watch this, I've spent all this time saying how the foam ones don't work for me because I'm really rough on them and watch, I'm probably gonna have like major bleed through on this guy and my foam one came out perfect because that's how it always works. But actually it came out crazy crisp. In fact, this may be hard to see, but the difference, this one is grainier, the coverage isn't as good, whereas this one truly did come out pretty much exactly the way the stencil worked out. And so the trick to that, and again, this isn't even a vinyl stencil. It's just, or it's not one of those sticky stencils. It's just a regular cheapy stencil from dollar store. 
it's, it's offloading. So the trick, and again, you're going to decide what works for you, but I used to go the sponge route and I'd be like, pounce, pounce, getting, getting impatient, getting impatient. Hey, Jeannie. Yeah. Stencils. You asked for it last week, right? So we're doing it. And so you're going to have to experiment a little bit to see what works for you. But I definitely find that at least for me, especially when I was doing like massive amounts of sign work, um, the stencil brushes were a little bit better. Although honestly, if you are doing major sign work, like, you know, the big five and six foot port signs, which I used to do, it's better if you have the, um, I like the custom stencils, like the, the vinyl ones that you do on your Cricut. Um, then I would use a foam roller, but I also, and I can't really show it here, but I would also do a thin layer of Mod Podge right around all the edges on the inside. So if this was a sticky, a sticker instead of a, um, you know, just a, a lift and a reusable one, if I Mod Podged all of this and allowed it to dry and then did the paint really fast, it would still come out almost perfectly crisp. And the reason is because that Mod Podge would seal all the gaps between the stencil edge and, and, the, and the surface. So nothing would goop under. And so you would basically be applying a layer of white paint over the Mod Podge. And then when you peel the thing up, it comes out like totally gorgeous. And that was really kind of one of those amazing, amazing tricks. And I was like, Wah! it took the whole sign making thing to a next level and made it a lot less painful for lack of a better term. Okay. So here we go. I'm going to do it again, just in case you missed it the first time. So for me, I like a good boar bristle round and I like them big. So if I'm doing really big sign work, I'll even go with like a big mama, but you can also have, you know, cute, shorter ones. This one's stained. They come in a bunch of sizes. And so we've got it on, but it's, it's very light there. We've offloaded a bunch and you can try the pounce dab, but you're going to, you're going to want to kill me. The gentle circles, gentle circles. And I've tried a whole lot of different techniques because let me tell you, I've had some bad stenciling days in my, in my time. Oh, look, I went over. So I'll just keep going with this guy here. Get a little bit more. And again, I'm dab, dab, dab. You do not want a lot of paint. So oftentimes if you are doing like professional sign work with, with a stencil, um, you may need to do several coats before you lift the, lift the sticker. Look at that. It came out perfectly crisp. And so when in doubt, really the trick is less paint, patience, hold that sucker down and then just light circles over the top, light circles. Let's see. Oh yeah. So Holly says she can totally see, see the difference. Jeannie wants to know what surface. This is just a canvas board. This is like a, it's canvas, you know, the pan, oh, canvas panel, canvas panel. It's like, they are like 50 cents each or something really cheap. I have painted the rainbow background for something or other. I don't remember what it was. Um, and so this is just an opportunity to be, instead of you sitting here watching me paint something, uh, doing it this way. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, and you can do this really for any kind of seasonal um, stencil. If you're working in really big, like if you're going to essential stencils or getting like the, like the, the porch sign size ones with the letters that are like this big, um, deep breath, prepare to commit yourself some time. And that's when these larger brushes really do pay off because then you can get great coverage quickly. So if I like plop this down, and I come in and I dab that paint, kind of slam it down I need to re-glue this, re this brush. I've got a couple of thick spots here. I don't know if you can see that. See here, it's fairly even, but I got a couple of thick spots. So I kind of need to go off to the side and pounce it off so that, it, well, yeah, I think it's close to me. We'll see how that goes. Now I can just come in here and get really fast coverage. Maybe. And so if you have a couple of sections or areas where you feel like it's harder to get or the circling won't make sense, you can also pounce with one of these. It's, it's going to drive you nuts, but you can do it because the bristles are so hard, they're not going to squeeze as much paint out. And that's kind of the trick with these, um, the natural bristles versus the sponge. Ooh, I got a big chunk there. That's going to be a problem, isn't it? Let's see here. So crazily enough, I'm feeling like we had better coverage and just easier ease, better ease of use with this guy. 
I want to say this one's a, like a Martha Stewart. Oh, it is. It's Martha Stewart one. I got it at Michael's. This one might have been like this awesome freebie I got on Amazon. You know, sometimes you like buy a thing and then they're like, oh, we'll try this and sample it and tell us how you think. And, you know, we'll give you your money back if you write a review. Although I didn't write a review, so I probably probably didn't actually get it for free. I don't know. I paused here. And in fact, that's kind of cool because it creates like a little bit of a fade look. And so there you have it. What questions do you guys have? Um, oh, okay. So Holly asks, why do these stencils not need the Mod Podge? They don't need the Mod Podge because I'm not doing multiple layers and it's not the sticker kind. The sticker kind, um, you know, I meant to have one. I actually had one. I was, I was decluttering my house and I threw it away. And then like after it went to the trash, I was like, oh, right, I needed that. So the sticker kind, they tend to adhere and you tend to be doing thick, thick, thick layers. Um, whereas, you know, when we're using stencils just for fun in like, like um, an, an art journal or whatever, I personally don't even care if it's a mess, if I did a messy job or if I did a clean job because I just kind of want some fun shapes and it's kind of supposed to be background. But when you're making a sign that you want to be crisp and perfect, um, the Mod Podge really helps. So Holly, another thing, like when you and I made your, your, um, your sign with a, with a, with puppy paws on it, we didn't use the Mod Podge because we were doing it on raw untreated wood. We stained it, but that wood was still very, very thirsty. And so it literally sucked all the paint up. But if I'm doing something with like latex and it's very glossy, that paint, even with a good sticker, is just going to go and squeeze right under, especially when I'm doing thick, thick layers or multiple layers, like a black and white letter or two tone. That's where that really comes in. So the Mod Podge is, is for the, is for the one time use sticker, sticker stencils. And that's when you're looking for the super crisp quality. And then these multi-use ones, you tend not to use the, the Mod Podge. Let's see. So um Jeannie asks maybe yours leak or she says maybe mine leaks because when I stencil on a regular canvas it bounces oh so so Jeannie when you're doing that are you doing the stippling like up and down like the bam 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 um that could be it and yes sometimes they do they do bounce so the canvas panels can be nice or if you have like a wood board if you know you're going to be doing some stenciling um, bum, bum, bum. let's see what do I got? Oh, I rearranged everything. Oh, hold on, guys, I'm coming. I swear. Okay, so for example, if I have a board like so, and this is a test piece where I was messing raw wood that came out like super crystal clear because it was super thirsty. So I have like a piece of wood, and if I wanted to stencil on this guy, I could literally just kind of stick it in the corner. And then lay my stencil out and do my stencil right on the surface. And now it's not going to bounce. And so, yeah, the harder surface is great for, for stenciling. That is a really good point. So I'm not a fan of stenciling on stretched canvas because it bounces, because it's hard to kind of keep track of. Same also for if you're doing like um, mixed media, like collage, because, because it does have a little bit of flex and move and give to it. Um, it's going to tend to crack over time, which, you know, isn't, isn't always great where to put my thing. So there are definitely, that is definitely one of the, the, the winning factors of using a canvas panel. And of course my most favorite thing to stencil on is wood. And this is just white wood from Lowe's. Um, it's like the one inch by 10 inches, which of course nominally is nine inches, not 10. I love it how they like basically like, yeah, it's 10 inches, but you only get nine of them. Okay. And let's see what else we have. So Holly says, cool. Thanks. I always failed with the sticker ones for your table. Now you know why. Yeah. So it could also be that you were just like pounding away or using a normal brush. Like I had to read up on this. I have failed stenciling so many times. It's kind of not funny. And it's really one of those things that takes time and practice. Um, and also I had to go watch a bunch of YouTube videos to learn and to see other people do demos um, and to try them. And, you know, every method works for someone, but not every method works for everyone. And so I know for me, if it's got a sponge on it and, you know, some people use makeup sponges, but I'd be like, oh, and I'd be like shoving my thumb into it and the paint would go everywhere. So again, things to think about. So why don't we just finish off a couple more stencils on this guy? 
I've determined today that I much prefer Mr. Martha Stewart, excuse me, Mr. The Ms. Martha Stewart version to my big fat, my big fat one. So again, I can dip in a big chunk of paint, but then I really need to kind of come and dab it way off to smooth out my brush. And here we go. And this is actually day old paint left over from yesterday, but I covered it. So it's a little thicker than normal. That's not necessary, but in this case, it does help. I also find that gesso tends to be a little bit easier with, with stenciling. So if you're doing outdoor signs, gesso is not your guy. Oops, my stencil moved. But if you're doing stenciling on like a journal page or for indoor canvas paintings, oh, I keep moving it. Well, it came out crisp where I left it. Let's move it here. Yeah, so stencil or gesso is indoor only. So, but acrylic is great for indoor, outdoor. And, um, you know, spray paint's actually not bad with stencils either. However, it smells horrible. You have to do it outside. So if you live somewhere like Virginia, it's very seasonal because it doesn't like it to be too hot. It doesn't like it to be too humid and it doesn't like it to be too cold. And I think there's like five days of the year when it's none of those. Um, and it can't be too windy or all the particulate crap from your yard and your neighbor's yard will blow into it. So again, today, while the temperature might be perfect, the wind is so bad that it's not happening. So everything has its kind of ups and downs. So here I'm kind of smashing down with this guy, which also works. Oops. And I think it's, it's because I've got all these edges right here and I don't want to bleed over the edges. So you can, you can kind of slam that, slam that bristle brush down quite a bit when you're close to an edge. And then if I, and that's the edge of the stencil here, right? Where I don't want bleed over. Of course, my fingers are causing plenty of bleed over. And you can kind of see this one was the, was the pounce or was the, um, the spongy guy, not so great. And the rest of these, well, I messed up there, but have really come out pretty crisp by using the brush. So go ahead and experiment. These are wonderful if they're one time use, or if you are a professional artist like myself and you saw art kits, I, I would have to charge double my, my price to throw one of these in a kit. These I can throw in easily. However, most of my projects just don't have stencils that I, but um, just something to think about, you know, um, it's much easier, much lower barrier to entry to just use a foamy. It can be done. If you have a chip brush, you can get a very similar because it's the same bristle type as the stencil brush. But um, usually these guys come very, oops, I kicked that thing. Sorry. Stay still. They come very fluffy. If you can see that very fluffy and that's not going to work for a stencil. So I often will take scissors and hack it off. You see that difference there? Sharp versus fluffy. With that sharp edge, I now will, if I especially am not super concerned about the edges, we'll just use one of those for a quick, a quick stencil and it's pretty good. And these chip brushes are not pricey at all. I buy them in bulk for like 50 cents a piece. Uh, foam brushes. You can also I have one. Hold on. Hold on. You can also use these guys. Everybody has these. You can get them at the dollar store. However, instead of going up and up and down with this guy, because it's a little fine point, you might do better by doing it kind of on the side and pouncing that way. The other reason that you would do that is now you're not mashing and you'll have a little bit better control over the pressure. So you could also take it this way and do it if you wanted. But again, it has a lot of flex in this direction. And so that's where having it on its side, it's going to be much more even and straight up and down. So again, there's a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of tools and ways to go about doing stenciling. I hope you found this helpful. If you know someone who you think would be like, oh my gosh, that is the answer to how to make stencils better. Please feel free to share. You can find me on Instagram as well. And I have a free painting group if you're not already part of it called Let's Paint with Blue Cat Studio. And I also have a paid membership. It's not open right now. Um, but we do all kinds of fun things. And this is the latest project that we I just released today. I'm super excited for my members. It's called our Christmas Bubbles. And uh, we should be doing a sled. Ah! Oh, I dropped my painting. <laughs> and we should be doing a, um, a sled paint party shortly too. So thanks for joining me. And I will see you guys next time. I love you. You're the best.
Bye. Oh, wait, Regina says something. She says, I have a love hate relationship with stencils and you recently started using glaze with ceramics, a stencil powder. Oh girl, you need to show me that. That sounds interesting. We'll, ha we'll have to explain. We'll have to try more. This was stencils 101. All right, guys, now I'm going to go. See you later. Bye-bye.